Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Do not listen to what the world says if you figure out that that world is just uh, trying to hurt you. Okay? Just try to drag you down. Do not listen to them. Just follow your path and achieve your goals and uh, be great. Uh, I'm, this is an advice for me and for everyone else. What do we have here? We know, because we're told, that Russia is a terrorist state and uh, we know that Putin is uh, the second Hitler. We know that the Russians commit war crimes at will and all that. But, at the same time, they do certain things, uh, you know, like that saying, the dogs are barking, barking the caravan keeps going. So, the same here. We got all these guys yapping and yelling and calling Russians this and that, saying that the Russians are somehow, somehow you know what I mean, saying that they do not have resources anymore, saying that the sanctions destroy the Russian economy, the ruble is done, and all that. They don't, have, they don't have anything else. And on the contrary, it seems like the achievements, or some achievements, tell a different story. I know that this story could be interpreted in many ways, but we're going to discuss um, facts and evidence. Interpretations are interpretations, but the facts are, you know, 99% there. So, this article comes from Fox News and it is from uh, December 29, 2022, today. Putin launches large, latest nuclear submarine, Emperor Alexander III, as part of a new fleet. So, while Russia is losing the war in Ukraine because it doesn't have any more missiles and uh, rockets, they somehow drop a submarine uh, in the seas and the submarine will start its uh, tests. I, I don't know, we can laugh how much we want, the fact is that's an achievement. Uh, you can say, well, it's gonna sink, oh, it's a piece of shit, evidence. No, that's an interpretation, that's an assumption. And you can have your assumptions, but they value as much as an assumption. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday commissioned his latest nuclear submarine dubbed, and I'm quoting Emperor Alexander III, as part of Moscow's move to create a fleet of nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines. Can you tell who's shitting his or her pants at this point? Uh, I have at least three contenders. And one is the Zimbabwe from across the Atlantic, which I'm pretty sure they ha already have the antidote uh, you know, to destroy this. But anyway, let the Russians do what they do best, be stupid. Correct? Correct. I will tell you a story about the MiGs. When I came to the United States, I met a uh, Vietnam War vet veteran. And he told me how good the, 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 the MiGs-29 were. Anyway, Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday commissioned his latest nuclear submarine dubbed bub, 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 submarine uh, that is nuclear powered ballistic missile submarines. He's gonna have a fleet. That means more than one, right? The submarine was launched in the city of Severodvinsk on the White Sea. White Sea is that a racist? After being developed by the Russian ship building company Sevmask. No, I'm sorry, Sevmash, a subsidiary of the United Shipbuilding Corporation, which oversees the constructions and maintenance of Russia, Russia's navy. Putin championed the fleet as being beyond compare to any other naval fleet in the world. That's a good uh, propaganda thing, but until it's in action, we really don't know. While the Emperor Alexander III, capable of carrying 16 Bulava intercontinental ballistic missiles, will undergo testing next June, according to state media RIA, three other vessels were donned with the Russian flag Thursday and will begin military service. Uh, it's kind of an achievement for a third world country, Can, don't, you, don't you think? And I'm quoting, the new submarines and surface ships 
have modern navigation, communications, and hydroacoustics uh, systems, high precision weapons, and robotic robotic systems, Putin said. Another nuclear submarine cruiser titled Generalissimo Suvorov, a small missile ship called Grad, and the sea mine, mines sweeper, mine sweeper Anatoly Shlemov, were all officially handed over to the Navy in a ceremony. These are facts. Now you can say this piece of shit. Well, evidence? No. Okay, then we talk when uh, they're gonna go. Boop. Okay, then we talk. Until then, they're, they're, they are there in the middle of the war uh, that uh, the Russians, I don't know, sc scrape the bottom of the barrel of um, resources, supposedly by the free mass media who gives us this information a daily. Remember that a weasel, as it has a weasel. I, I think I don't know if he's a weasel. I think he's just doing his job. Because uh, actually, you know, the intelligence services are supposed to, uh, among other uh, uh, tasks that they have, is to disinform the enemy and uh, others, if you know what I mean. Okay? Just a shoulder twitch. So, uh, we, uh, that. That's Mr. Ben Wallace, the British uh, military intelligence uh, trapper lapa kappa kappa. Okay? He came in the 24th, to be exact. 24th of December uh, this year, 2022, to be more exact, I made a video on that, saying that Russia uh, is not going to be able to launch another massive missile attack on Ukraine because it lacks missiles. What happened today? Yeah, yeah, today, today, the 29th. The Russians overdid it. They dropped 140 missiles on Ukraine today, more than ever before. So that makes him uh, Mr. Uh, Wallace. Uh, William Wallace <laughs> or Ben Wallace, uh, Benjamin, because he's Benjamin now. He's not William. William used to be when we were, you know, <clears throat> now we're Benjamin and uh, anyway. So we have this, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Uh, nothing wrong with biblical names, okay? So here we go. I have a biblical name as well. So if they give it to me, I can just scratch it. <laughs> If I don't like it. Anyway, let's go back to this. So he said that, and obviously he either lied, he knew that the Russians are capable, or he did his job lying, <laughs> mean, meaning. All right, and I'm quoting I would like to congratulate all Russian sailors and shipbuilders on the significant milestone event for the fleet. End quote. Public, uh, pu public. <laughs> Putin said, adding the additional vessels signif I'm quoting, significantly increase the capabilities of our nuclear naval forces. End quote. Uh, the Gen Generalissimo Suvorov will also be armed with Bulava intercontinental ballistic missiles. So basically, you're fucked. The two most recent nuclear powered and potentially nuclear armed submarines means that Russia's Navy will soon have seven of the top ve vessels with more planned for future development. But they don't have the resources, they will be done, right? Right, and I'm quoting. Four more such submarines will be built as part of the current state arrangement program, which will ensure Russia's security for decades to come, Putin said during the ceremony Thursday. The Grad is small, it's a small rocket ship that Putin said has high, I'm quoting, high efficiency in solving combat missions in Syria, end quote, quote, while the Anatoly Shlemov is a mine sweeping vessel consisted, considered one of the most successful Russian developments in surface shipbuilding, according to the Kremlin chief. I'm a chief. <laughs> Let me put my feathers. Uh, Ten more mine sweeping ships are planned for development. Ten. Wow, well, planning is one thing, achieving that is a different one. Correct, correct, but at least they're planning. Putin pledged to continue developing Russia's naval capabilities as the war in Ukraine rages and said, we will increase the peace, the pace, I'm sorry, the peace, the pace and volume of construction of ships. Good for you. The, pr the question is, are you able? Are you disabled? Okay, we'll find out. Um, I don't know the quality, but since our 2022, I'm assuming that they are the, I mean, they should be, right? Uh, then I don't think they look at the models from 1962 and they build them like that, you know? I mean, let's give them a little bit of credit. 
Now, uh, I'm pretty sure the Western media will uh, downplay this and say that's garbage, that's piece of shit, this is just a, pff, they're gonna just go down there, this, uh, like any uh, product is not perfect and it has its flaws. Now, let's go to my little story. When I came here to this beautiful country, United States of America, well, uh, because of various reasons, uh, I had to pick up and not I had to, I wanted, let's put it this way, to work. That's why I came to work and earn an honest living and uh, do not uh, prostitute myself like uh, you would probably in Romania now. I know you used to do it then. So anyway, forget about Romania, let's go back here. So I worked uh, in different uh, low, you would call them low quality jobs. And I met very many people in that capacities, plural. So I work with some, I work with clients, with this and that. So one of these workers, it was at the, I would say the lowest, uh, it didn't need too much uh, uh, expertise or talents or skills or any, anything in that, actually. It was a, you know, laborer thing. So it was a guy who used to be, who was, uh, he said, a uh, Vietnam War veteran. Now, he was a, a guy who uh, fought in Vietnam. He, I'm saying this just, you know, he was an alcoholic and he was working over there as far as he could. He would come drunk and he would just pass out and so on. But the guy had his own problems like we have ours. And uh, I know we were talking about Russia at that time and discussing and all that. He, and I, I mentioned the MiG, I mean, MiG 21, 29, I think it was. And he said that it's a piece of, uh, of heavy uh, equipment that doesn't, can, it can't even fly. The MiGs are so bad, they're just too heavy. They're heavy, they, they can't fly, they're so bad. That, that was the entire argument of a infantry a fighter who was drafted, dropped in the jungle, fought, came back home, uh, he didn't provide any arguments like specifications. He said, uh, MiG-29 is a heavy airplane and has no value, it's a piece of, it's just a rusty uh, airplane. That was the whole argument. And he said, well, our F-16s are the best and others. Okay, well, good for you, man. I mean, tell me about it. I want to learn. But his argument was zero evidence, just something that he was parroting to me from some other weasels that told him probably on the TV. So the same thing will happen right now. If I'm going to go and speak with some of my acquaintances uh, that I speak with, and they will tell me about this um, nuclear uh, Alexander, uh, what they were... Tsar Alexander III going to tell us that they're just a piece of iron, rusty, not good and so on. But you ask them, okay, give me some specifications. C compare it with that. Give me something. Uh, they will probably not be able. So anyway, that's the way propaganda works. And you and I have to deal with this friend of ours or acquaintances that you have to argue like crazy. And you say, wait a minute. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. The, f the problem is that we cannot see that we are played by them. That's the only, and some people, you know, uh, get upset, get angry, break friendships or whatever because of that. What value does it have? An argument that it was a contradictory, you know, we had a disagreement. Okay, with the disagreement, move on, talk about something else. Go and learn, read about it and then come back and tell this person, okay, this is what I read. He's going to go and do his research, come back and tell you, okay, this is what I read. And therefore you learn, both of you. And at the end of the day, you both have more knowledge. Instead of doing that, we argue. Like, oh, no, 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 too much passion, too much, uh, you know, pathos and too little logos. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.